Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, a very warm welcome to you. Today we are going to have a closer look at anti-helminthic drugs. Let's talk about that. Helminths are worms. I've got detailed video series on helminthic infections and helminths. Find their links in the description or in the top right corner. Anti-helminthic drugs work against the helminthic infections caused by nematodes, stomatodes, and cestodes. There are two categories in anti-helminthic drugs. First one is wormicide. Wormicide is a drug that is responsible for killing the worm. The number two is wormifuge. It is responsible for not only killing but also expelling the worm out of the body. Lecture outline. I've introduced you guys to anti-helminthic drugs. Now we are going to have a look at its classification that include anti-nematodal, anti-traumatodal and anti cestodal drugs. Let's talk about the mnemonics and the names of the anti-helminthic drugs. The nematodes um, have got drugs against them. Um, I've got mnemonic for that. That is Thaya has a dimple. Thia is for thiabendazole and dimple has got D-I-M-P in it. So D is for diethylcarbamazine, I is for ivermectin, M is for mebendazole and P is for pyrantal pain weight. So you can memorize anti nematodal drugs with this mnemonic. Trematodes um, are treated with just one drug and that is praziquandol. Cestodes are treated with albendazole and niclosamide. So I've got a really easy and cool mnemonic for that. That is N. A and N. Anti nematodal drugs. These are the drugs that work against nematodes. Nematodes are the round worms that possess a complete digestive system. The anti nematodal drugs are mebendazole, pyrantal pamoy, thiabendazole, ivermectin, and diethylcarbamazine. Let's talk about each of them in detail. Starting with mebendazole, it is a synthetic benzimidazole compound and is a first line agent for the treatment of infections caused by nematodes like whipworm, pinworms, and hookworms. It is is contraindicated in pregnancy. Mechanism of action. It acts by binding to the parasite beta tubulin and inhibiting microtubule polymerization in the parasite. Affected parasites are expelled in the feces. Adverse effects include abdominal pain and diarrhea. Next drug in the list is parental pain weight. Parental pain weight is also effective in the treatment of infections caused by around worms, pit worms and hook worms. It is mainly um, effective against intestinal infections. Its route of administration is oral. Mechanism of action. It acts as a depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent causing release of acetylcholine and inhibition of cholinesterase leading to paralysis of the worm and subsequent exposure. Adverse effects are mild and they include nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. The next drug in the line is thiabendazole. It is a synthetic benzimidazole and is a potent broad-spectrum anti-helminthic agent. Its use is limited to topical treatment um, of cutaneous larval migraines, the creeping eruption. And it has got some serious toxic effects. Okay, let's talk about ivermectin. It is a drug of choice for the treatment of cutaneous larval migraines, tonguloidiasis, onchocerciasis, pediculosis, and scabies. It is contraindicated in pregnancy and its route of administration is oral. Mechanism of action. Ivermectin targets the glutamate-gated chloride channel receptors. Chloride influx is enhanced and hyperpolarization occurs, resulting in paralysis and death of foam. The drug is given orally and does not readily cross the BBB, the blood-brain barrier. Adverse effects. The killing of microfilaria in onchocerciasis can result in dangerous nosotic reactions that include fever, headache, dizziness, somnolence, and hypotension. Diethylcarbamazine is next one. Is the drug of choice for filariasis caused by the infection with Bucheraria bankrupti. It works against both microfilaria and adult worms. Its route of administration is oral. Pharmacokinetics. It is rapidly absorbed and is excreted in urine. Adverse effects may include fever, nausea, vomiting, ophthalgias, and headache. Traumatodes are the flukes. These are leaf-shaped flake worms and are characterized by the tissue that in fact, for example, liver, lung, intestinal, or blood. Praziquantel. It is a drug of choice for the treatment of traumatode and sometimes cestode infections. It is contraindicated for the treatment of ocular cysticercosis. You might be thinking, why? Let me tell you. Because destruction of organism in the eye may cause irreversible damage. Following drugs increase its metabolism. Dexamethasone, um, phenytoin, rifampin, carbamazepine. Its route of administration is oral. Mechanism of action. It causes contracture and paralysis of parasite. It 
does that by increasing permeability of cell membrane to calcium. Pharmacokinetics. It is rapidly absorbed after oral administration and should be taken with food. The drug is extensively metabolized and the inactive metabolites are excreted primarily in urine. Common adverse effects include dizziness, malaise, um, headache, as well as GI upset. Finally, we are done with antinematodal and antitematodal drugs. Let's talk about antisestodal drugs. These are the drugs that are effective against cestodes. Cestodes are the true tapeworms. Typically have a flat, segmented body and attached to host's intestines. Like trematode, the tapeworms lick a mouth and a digestive tract throughout their life cycle. The antisestodal drugs are niclosamide and albendazole. Let's talk about niclosamide first. Niclosamide is an alternative to praziquantel. A laxative is given prior to the drug. Its route of administration is oral. Mechanism of action. It inhibits the mitochondrial phosphorylation of ADP in the parasite. It makes it lethal for cestodes, scolex and segments, but not for the ova. Um, as I told you that a laxative is given prior to that drug. Why? Because it purged the bowel of all dead segments and to enhance digestion and liberation of ova. Albendazole. It is a benzimidazole. It is a primary therapeutic method. It is given in a short course therapy. Route of administration is oral. Pharmacokinetics. Albendazole is erratically absorbed after oral administration, but absorption is enhanced by high fat meal. It undergoes extensive first pass metabolism in liver, including formation of an active sulfoxide, and its metabolites are primarily excreted in bile. Adverse effects are mild and transia and include headache and nausea. But sometimes also vomiting, fever, seizure, inflammatory responses and death of parasite in CNS. The patient also has a risk of hepatotoxicity, rarely a granulocytosis or pancytopenia. Now that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comment section. And don't forget to check out all my other videos. And also don't forget to check out my social media. I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter and I do upload blogs. I'll catch you soon. Till then, assalamu alaikum.